Welcome back. This is Special Programming Market Masters, and we have with us the ultimate master, Mark Mobius, master of emerging markets and master of investing. Mark, uh, you know, we, we've spoken a lot about India and the equities out here. What, what's interesting is the sort of run-up that we've seen in the commodities space. A uh, lot of these hard commodities having seen big multi-year rallies. Any preferred equity plays via this space? Do you like the metal space in India, uh, gold, silver? How do you play that? Uh, that's a very, very good point. I believe that uh, every portfolio should have some physical gold. Uh, very, very important. Um, and you can see what's happened to gold and silver. Silver is going to be, uh, already is outperforming gold. Um, and I think there are a number of reasons for that. Probably the primary one is that globally, there's a new generation of investors who really don't um, trust the central banks around the world and don't trust the currency. And they want to hedge their portfolios by buying gold and silver. So that's going to be a very interesting development. And of course, as gold moves up, other metals move up as well because they, they're betting on commodities in general to preserve their wealth. So uh, we're seeing a big, big shift. And of course, if you look at the crypto currencies, you'll see they're moving up at a fast pace as well in line with gold and silver. Okay. Mark, uh, just on that point on commodities, uh, I know you're an India bull, but we also have Brent crude, which is at $90 per barrel. We have tensions simmering between Israel as well as Iran, which could possibly potentially be a risk for crude prices. Do you think that could be a deterrent, at least in the near to medium term? I don't think it'll be deterrent. I think there'd be a gradual increase in the price of oil and in dollar terms. And of course, that's reflecting not so much uh, the oil price, but the depreciation of the dollar. The dollar is, um, of course, very, very plentiful. As you know, the Fed has been printing and printing. Now they're reducing, but still, it's an awful lot of dollars out there. And that's a reflection of the weakness of the dollar, uh, this oil price, and commodities in general, by the way. Just a follow-up on the crude bit. Uh, do you look at uh, oil marketing companies as investable options? Uh, yes, we do, but we're more interested in now in uh, oil companies that are exploring and are having the technology to discover new oil. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's one area which we think is quite interesting. Uh, any other commodities, uh, industrial metals, which stand out? I mean, copper, for example, is being... Uh, we were supposed to have a big copper super cycle in 2021. We had a bit of a... We had a sharp move, but then uh, that uh, fizzled. Do you think, uh, you know, copper perhaps makes a big comeback? Uh, just your view on other industrial metals. Well, I think nickel is worth looking at. Mm. Uh, nickel would be one area, uh, mainly because of the battery. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, electric car battery consumption uh, is increasing uh, the, the the need for batteries. So nickel might be interesting, but you've got to be very careful with these commodities because at the end of the day, uh, the supply demand equation could be really a problem. Mm. But we have to look at that. You know, Mark, you uh, briefly uh, mentioned about interest rates in the West, right? Uh, do you think, you know, so U.S. rates have gone to uh, 5%, five percent, five and a quarter. Markets in the West have done very well. So the one can say, well, if, they did, if rates going up did not hurt, if rates coming down, will they help? Uh, but on the other side, for emerging markets, if rates come down and the dollar weakens substantially, I mean, that is a time-tested kind of correlation, right? It means more flows into emerging markets. Uh, sitting here in India, yeah. is that the bet to make? Uh, you know, whenever rates starts to come off and the dollar uh, goes south, I mean, that basically uh, pushes a lot of money towards EMs? Yeah, generally speaking, that's the case. If you see rates come down, uh, it'll be more attractive to go into emerging markets. But the shift to emerging markets have already begun. Uh, you must remember that if you look at the U.S. market and the Indian market as a good example, but other markets, uh, Korea has done well, uh, Taiwan has done very well. So uh, people are beginning to diversify away from the U.S. market, knowing that the U.S. market has performed very well, but may not continue uh, the, the uh, trend. So I believe that you're going to see a lot of people diversifying into emerging markets, regardless of what the interest rate is. 
Now, of course, a lower interest rate means that people are going to be put, putting more money into equities. Okay. Uh, Mark, uh, you know, we're starting uh, earnings season soon with TCS. Uh, what is your sense in terms of the IT space considering uh, the global demand situation? Any IT stocks specifically that you like considering there is a lot happening with regards to artificial intelligence as well? Yeah, that very good question because artificial intelligence is really changing the scenario for software in general. And those companies in the software space that are not taking advantage of AI uh, will be in trouble. But I believe that uh, they have grasped the opportunity and there'll be actually more opportunities for the software, Indian software companies to export their software. So I'm quite bullish on software in general. And I believe that uh, companies uh, that are in this space will do quite well. Uh, you, you mentioned in passing about uh, the world moving to electric vehicles. I wanted to know whether you've bought an EV yourself or not. <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I don't drive. <laughs> All right. uh, maybe he flies I, I in the private jet. Uh, but, you know, but, you know, uh, you know, it's interesting that here in Dubai, uh, if you select an electric vehicle, uh, to, you know, to hire, it's more expensive than the uh, regular petrol engines. Yeah, understandable, so, given its uh, uh, proximity to oil. But, you know, speaking about that theme itself, a lot of people call Tata Motors as the Tesla of India. With money coming out of the U.S. going into India, do you, uh, you know, where are you on that? <laughs> well, I believe that, uh, of course... The, uh, the industry in India will grow at a fast pace with more and more people able to, to afford uh, AI and, uh, and, and you know, companies that are in the space of uh, applying AI to automobiles. And that's going to be a very good development. But electric vehicles are the future for India as well. Mm. And speaking about the Tatas itself, I mean, a lot of these conglomerates have come back as well. We've seen, you know, big announcements come by from the Birlas trying to set their house in order for a lot of their uh, companies. The Tatas, of course, have been big wealth creators. Uh, your thoughts on some of these conglomerates? Is there anyone that you like? Well, Tata is probably the prime example of a company that's done so well in so many areas and really improved the quality of uh, various sectors. If you look at what they've done in the airline sector and in so many other areas, and uh, they're really a leader in many, in many of these sectors. So I would say that at the end of the day, Tata will do very well simply because the demand in India is going to increase uh, tremendously and there's going to be a demand for electric vehicles. Right. Uh, Mark, uh, you know, uh, pre-COVID, uh, the, for the, the 10 years or so before that, it was all about services, right? It was about technology. Uh, it was about uh, uh, the, uh, the not, not tangibles, not hard infrastructure. That's changed over the last uh, couple of years after COVID. I mean, I think the world's woken up to the fact that uh, manufacturing capacities in many areas actually is, is, uh, is, not, is not enough. So there is a revival to, towards that. I just wanted to understand from you uh, the big picture over the next couple of years. What are the big themes within manufacturing? Is it, you know, electrification? What within electrification? Uh, you know, is it, is it cars as a theme to play? Is it power? Is, uh, you know, just, just your overall sense on what are the big manufacturing themes which will do very well. Because at the end of the day, I mean, it's, it's all uh, in, in a way global. What happens globally comes here sooner than later. Well, at the key to the entire system now is technology. Hmm. Um, when we go to a manufacturing company, in fact, any company that we're looking at, and we talk to the management, the first thing we ask is, what are you doing in technology? How are you using technology to improve your profitability, improve your efficiency? And that is the key theme. And in manufacturing, it's going to be even more important because with robotics, with AI, uh, the efficiency is going to be improving dramatically. And that's uh, something that we have to look at and be aware of. You cannot be investing in a company that's not using technology to improve its profitability and its efficiency. So uh, uh, the uh, prices, by the way, as a result of AI, will be coming down in real terms. Uh, and therefore, the competition will become much more fierce. Okay. 
Mark, before we wrap up this conversation, you've previously given a target that the Sensex is probably going to hit that one lakh uh, mark probably in the next five years. Leave us with any kind of targets for the Nifty and the Sensex, maybe <laughs> near term, maybe long term, maybe three years, five years. Well, I stick with that target. I think that's going to happen maybe even sooner than I expected. No question. <laughs> All right. One lakh uh, over the next couple of years on the uh, Sensex. Well, Mark, it's a pleasure having you with us here. Uh, thank you very much for joining us and good luck with your fund. And uh, we hope to speak with you, uh, uh, you know, around uh, through, uh, through the next couple of months and, of course, post-elections as well. Thank you indeed for joining us here. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you.